From the Fans Talk Podcast family at fanstalkpodcast.com, this is episode two of Wrestling with Feelings. It's a look at my personal journey as well as the journey of others who are working through depression and ADHD. My name is Garvin, and yes, I was recently diagnosed with both depression and ADHD. And after spending a few months talking with a therapist, I've just come to realize just how great it is to talk to someone who understands and is willing to listen and help me work through all of my feelings. Before we get started with today's therapy session, uh, you should know that this series, as well as the rest of the podcast created by the Fans Talk Podcast family, are entirely funded by members of our community. Every month, a group of you get together and pledge a few dollars on our Patreon page. Individually, the cost is minimal, but collectively, we're working together to make sure that we can afford to pay for the recording, hosting, and distribution of these episodes. We couldn't do it without you. If you aren't supporting us in this way, you can start now by going to WrestlingWithFeelings.com and clicking the big green button. That'll take you to our Patreon page where you can start supporting us today. All right, so last time we were together, it, it was it was just introducing what the series was uh, going to be, or at least a, an idea of what I've been personally dealing with. And I talked about the idea of uh, hopefully being able to sit down with uh, someone else who has uh, who is experiencing ADHD. Uh, and depression or depression. <laughs> uh, and this week I was able to. I was able to sit down with Reddit user Count Flandy to talk about his battle with ADHD. You know, we shared stories, habits, and we're able to give each other advice on, you know, things that we were struggling with. Really, cannot wait for you guys to check this out, to hear this conversation. Uh, you're going to hear the first part of the hour or so long conversation for free here on WrestlingWithFeelings.com. Uh, and I'm going to be releasing the extended version for Patreon subscribers only. So again, definitely join us over in the Squared Circle of Trust. It's easy to reach. WrestlingWithFeelings.com and click the big green button. That'll take you to the Patreon page where you can pledge just a few dollars. Uh, we're going to be releasing this content for anyone who pledges $3 a month or more. Now, initially, uh, I had planned on... Uh, talking to you for about 30 minutes each, ep each episode. But like I said, Count Flandy and I went on for about an hour. And it was just so cathartic to share you know, my story, hear someone else who's realistically you know, sharing a lot of the same habits and characteristics. But here's a few things that, that I've been working on and struggling through since the, since the last time we talked. Um, I know we had talked uh, a lot about you know, making friends and keeping friends. Um, I have started to try and improve that uh, by joining Tinder, <laughs> uh, and I know that's uh, mostly used as as a hookup site. Uh, but you know, my intentions have have been very clear. Uh, just looking for friends. It doesn't matter if you're a guy. It doesn't matter if you're a girl. Um, just trying to reach out and you know build that 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 support group around me. So I've connected with. Uh, two others. And, um, in the future, uh, I've got a, a meeting set up with, uh, with a third. Um, last night I was supposed to meet, uh, with someone, but, uh, got stood up. So, um, but yeah, I, I think it, it just, it's just a matter of like, that's, that's what I'm trying to do right now. And I'm also trying to find, you know, people that I know that, um, that, that I'm building, uh, you know, a friendship with. Uh, I've got a coworker named Suzanne who has been so, so awesome. Uh, just, you know, giving me advice, hearing me out. Um, we're, we're going back and forth. You know, she's dealing with, uh, some personal issues as well. So, you know, we're, we're sharing like really, really personal things with one another and, you know, trying to help each other through. And that, and that's really what friendship is, you know, not, not judging. Uh, what, what is happening in your life or how you're dealing with it, but just to, you know, kind of, kind of give you support, uh, regardless. So, um, so I've been working on that. That's, that's, that's been a, a major focus. And, um, yeah, so far so good. Hopefully it, it continues, but we'll, we'll find out. 
But one problem that I, I have been experiencing and I have seen a, a really sad trend happening is uh, finding myself unmotivated. I, I am late to get up in the morning. Uh, I don't want to get up at all. I have no motivation to get out of bed and to go about whatever I'm supposed to do. So, you know, if I'm getting up to go to work while my alarm is about uh, an hour, it's, it's set, it's set about an hour before I have to go. I'll, I'll hit snooze five, six, seven times. Um, I, I might even, I might even get out of bed and, um, you know, check my phone or check, um, anything, check my email, you know, stuff like that. But, um, a lot of times I'll I'll do that for a few minutes and then say, well, you know, I could sleep for another five minutes maybe. <laughs> and um, this last time it really really burned me. So, uh, but yeah, I've 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 basically seen myself. Uh, I, I I was late to therapy uh, a couple weeks ago uh, by about 15, 20 minutes. Um, I was late by an hour to a to a doctor's appointment for for depression and ADHD. Um, and you know, I, I blamed it on me inputting it incorrectly in my, uh, in my phone. Cause my phone is like everything. It's my calendar. It's my uh, alarm clock. It's, it's everything. Um, but, uh, and then this last therapy session, I, I completely missed. It was again, one of those scenarios where, you know, I figured oh, I'll sleep for another five minutes and then, uh, apparently rolled over on my phone or I don't know what took place, but I set my alarm. Uh, my phone told me I missed it completely and, and yeah, I didn't, I didn't make it. Uh, I woke up about half an hour late for the appointment and by the time it was going to take me to, uh, you know, get ready to, to, to actually go out there, like get, a, you know, take a shower and, uh, get some breakfast. Uh, there was no, there was no way. So, uh, luckily my therapy, or my therapist was rather um, relaxed about it. gave me uh, gave me a break. We rescheduled for uh, this upcoming week, so so that's that's pretty good. But yeah, like my mornings, I, I'm really uh, having a hard time being motivated or feeling motivated to do whatever I need to do. Now, I mean, once I get on my medication for that day um, and I get to work, I'm t- I'm totally good. When I get into those therapy sessions, I'm 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 good to go, but it's just the, the time period of getting up and taking that medication, um, that, that I'm, I'm, I'm really struggling with, but, uh, okay. So th- those are the, like the major points. Um, now again, initially, uh, I, I was hoping this would be a, a short series. Uh, you know, we're, you know, those of us who are sharing an ADHD, um, sitting through an, an hour and a half long podcast or anything like that. Um, it's really difficult to do and pay attention or, you know, remain focused on it. So, um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to release, uh, the, the first part of this conversation. I think we go about 45 minutes or so. And then the rest of it, uh, which we get into a lot of more different habits and, uh, advice and, and all kinds of good stuff. Um, I'm going to release that to Patreon subscribers. So again, wrestlingwithfeelings.com, click the big green button, pledge $3 a month or more, and uh, and, and and you'll get access to that content. Uh, but let's just go right into it. This, this conversation started uh, really right away. And because we, we talk a bit about what took place, uh, or I'm sorry, yeah, like what, what was mentioned in that initial conversation... I, I really felt like it was worth releasing to to everyone. So um, you're going to hear some off topic uh, stuff in the in the very beginning as, as we get settled and 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 ready to to really get into the ADHD part. But I thought it was really interesting. And Count Flandy is is, is a really cool guy who's doing some awesome things. So um, yeah, let's just go right into it. Hopefully, you get something out of it. Mike here. You don't do you hear, do you hear anything in the background? Because I know my computer has loud fans. Nah, it's okay. Okay, uh, sure. I mean, I'm not noticing anything uh, okay. detrimental. Because when I rec- do some voice acting in my free time, I, I notice it, but I don't know if it's um, bothersome enough for the podcast. What kind of uh, what do you do voice acting for? 
Ah, uh, I do freelance stuff for practice. I'm just mostly practicing at this point to um, get better, so I can actually do stuff freelance for mods and such. What's cool? What kind of work though? Ah, uh, I I'll do pretty much. I'll, I'll do anything. I seem to get. I've had a couple people enjoy my characters for older vo- voices for older characters. Right on. It's it's like something I toy with because people seem to like it. Yeah, you know. Um... Just to give you uh, a brief uh, history of of me, um, I'm I'm doing this podcast, but I'm also doing a couple other podcasts for uh, various topics, mostly uh, pro wrestling related. And uh, sure. but we started doing like a uh, a new series that we're calling Suburban Mysteries, and uh, basically my my wife um, writes short stories and then we do the the voice acting for it so um it's like a 20 to 30 minute podcast type of thing where we're just you know basically reading the story so i'm I'm usually the narrator but we do have uh, a few other people uh, like our friends that that jump in and do some of the voices so that was just kind of interesting that you uh, brought that up nice it's actually kind of cool i just i just do it for fun because people seem to like it and i I've gotten a few requests by my friends who sure. share mods. Yeah, we uh we're not uh we're not initially not doing it for fun. <laughs> you know, yeah. uh it, yeah, it's just it's just a, it's just a hobby that we're that we're trying to do something cool with. Um I think eventually like we're we're trying to put ourselves in a position where we can start um you know, making some funds for it. Uh we, we do have like a Patreon um page that some of our listeners will will pledge a few dollars um, every month just to you know keep us going, keep us motivated. That's nice. But it's not necessarily uh, making enough money to live on for sure. Yeah, no, <laughs> just, that'll take a while. Yeah, <laughs> well, that's um, something you can, you can aim for. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's nice to to be able to like take a hobby, you know, something that you have you know fun with or uh, have a passion for, and be able to turn that into something bigger and um you know financially sustainable oh yeah that's what i um i've been writing this web series for a while and that's that that's an aim i'd love to do but it's as always more so a concept and something you'd love to see happen rather than i'm gonna force it to happen what's the uh what's the web series uh i've been writing this web series about initially long story short back i think I created the character. It was based around when I was a sophomore in high school. That's I'm now out of college. It's been like five, six years. And it's based around the adventures of an elderly man and his best friend. And we he can time travel. And right. we use him and his weird comedy to not only make people laugh and enjoy it, but to also kind of take on important things in society that might affect our viewers. Sure. And while we're making them laugh, we're also make, making them feel something. Right. And so we try and have this really interesting balance, and I always try and add something new and make people laugh with some other different way each episode. So is it a is it a, like an audio thing or just a, like a like a blog series type of setup? Uh, it's currently I only have the scripts, oh, but okay. if when I when I'm when I get the, my own money to do the film the first episode, it's just going to be kind of. I'm debating still between live action and animation. I'm leaning towards live action because it's easier. Yeah. <laughs> rather than finding, a, you know, someone who's willing to do this constantly. Sure. So, I mean, is this something like, as far as like a goal, do you have a goal to, uh, like pitch this to, um, like a, like a larger network type of thing or do you just want to keep it internal? I I'll take it as it comes. I as long as I have creative reign over it, I really don't care what happens. As long as I get get it out, that's all that really matters to me. If a network takes it on and I get creative reign and more people see it, more power to it. Sure, yeah. But as long as more people see it, that's all that I want because the whole purpose is just kind of make people to enjoy it and uh, make them feel a bit better. Yeah, I mean, like from a from a creative standpoint, um, yeah, you definitely want to keep that creative control and you definitely want to continue to write for it. Uh, I think that's, that's the ultimate thing. Um, you, you're familiar with Orange is, is the New Black? Uh, yeah, I, I, I've read a couple of the scripts. I've watched a couple episodes. I 
I, I heard a, a talk done by the, the real Piper. Um, and she, she didn't necessarily have intention of like doing anything with this outside of, um, you know, she, she wrote her book and then, uh, she pitched it to different networks and different, uh, producers and stuff. Um, but her, her thing was that, you know, what, what her goal was, which is, which is obviously different from, from what you're doing. But for her, mm-hmm. it was, uh, you know, she, she definitely had this, this message, this, uh, this, um, ideal that she wanted more people to be aware of. And she wanted people to be aware of like the real life, um, ongoings of the prison system and how you know that these are real people that have real lives and real stories um so she kind of wanted to get that across but her her thought and in some respects it's 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 pretty cool but um her her thought was you know if if your if your message or if if what you're trying to do is uh, change people's minds or, um, you know, change perception in general, you know, you, you, you do have to relinquish creative control in some, in some fashion. So, you know, I think, I think that's a little bit different from what you got, what you've got going on, but, uh, it might be something you might want to, that you might run into. So if the message yeah. and, and the story is something that, you know, could change people's lives or could affect people in a certain way, best uh way at least for her was to relinquish some of that creative control so she's still like a consultant for netflix but ultimately um she just okays things and you know because it's it it's it's that mass that mass media side of things yeah the thing with at first it would have to for me if i were to relinquish control it'd have to be at least a at least eight episodes in because as it stands now, I, me and my co-writer, we have like six years of history of the character. <laughs> right. And we'd have to get that on the paper and into people's heads before we can even think about <laughs> giving people what we have. Sure. Because that would just lead to some sort of big inconsistencies. Yeah. Because we have, we've rewritten it like, I think around a fifth rewrite now. And the, all the other rewrites are still in our heads, but they're not canon. And so that would make some really weird inconsistencies. Whereas we want to use some stuff and if it would be a little bit of a mess. Yeah. For lack of me not being able to think of a word. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, um, did you see this in the ADHD or in the, in the depression subreddit? ADHD. Okay. So uh, I think I, I think I did see it in depression as well, but I'm I'm from AD, ADHD. Okay. So are you uh, are you dealing with with both sides or just the ADHD bit? Ah, uh, at this point, I'm not sure. I know it's ADHD. There might be a little bit of depression in there, but it it you have to be confirmed. Sure. It's it's this weird thing that I'm still trying to figure out. <laughs> yeah. I'm in this like gray area right now where. I'm switching insurance and doctors are have to switch doctors as well. So I've been off medication for a while mm. and it's really hard to figure out what goes where. Yeah. Do you mind telling me what, what medication you were on? Uh, I've been on Concerta for a okay. long time, actually. They tried to put me on Ritalin as a child, but my mother had them take me off it because it wasn't, it was just, it made me a zombie, she said. Sure. I yeah, didn't appreciate it. That's when I was like seven. Yeah. Okay. So, so you've been dealing with seven. Um, I, I, I'm still learning where where I stand. I, I'm in my early to mid thirties right now, um, and I, I just was diagnosed. Uh, but looking back at like, you know, just just going through the full process, like I, I, I started off knowing that I was dealing with like some pretty severe uh depression just because of a, a few different things that that were you know snowballing really yeah um so going through that uh seeing a therapist and talking to a therapist um i 
put on a three day, it's, it's me. Um, I have a co event organizer and then the company that, that I'm with, uh, we all kind of work together to put on this three day, uh, design conference. Um, so we bring in like designers and, um, illustrators and all kinds of creatives and startup businesses and whatnot to just kind of talk shop for, for two and a half days, three days. Um, but this is, this was my first year as the event organizer. Uh, before I was just like, I was just a volunteer working through the company and what I was most fearful of that, that week or that weekend was just the fact that like, I am, I'm not, not good <laughs> at talking, uh, with people in person. Like I'm, I'm fine on Skype. I'm fine text messaging or over the internet or whatnot. But as soon as I'm put in like a one-on-one -on -one situation, I, I, I just dread it. I want to get out as soon as possible. Yeah. That's, I, I'm the same way. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I, I took, uh, <laughs> I, I did the bad thing. Right. And I, um, I, I had a, a friend who had some extra Adderall that they didn't need. Uh, because of their personal health situation. And so I took some and it was like completely life changing. It was uh, it, it, like everything just became clear. I was having these one on one conversations with people I've never seen before. I've never talked to before and I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the conversation. Uh, I enjoyed the, the fact that we were there sharing that moment. I wasn't looking for like, an escape. I wasn't looking for an, you know, a reason to walk away. Uh, <laughs> it was, it was just, it was just really, really awesome. So, um, I admitted this to my doctor just because I was like, this is, <laughs> this is, this is what, this is what I want. Like, I, I want to feel this way, like all the time. And because of that, like, then I had to go back to my therapist and talk to my therapist about, you know, the possibility of me being ADHD uh, or ADHD or, you know, what, whatever the terminology yeah. is. And uh, and went through, like, the whole survey process and lots of different questions that he would ask and um, got diagnosed that way. So, um, you know, just looking back at my childhood, I could definitely, like, pinpoint, like, different things that, that took place that, you know – I definitely showed those, those signs, but, you know, as a kid, I didn't necessarily recognize my parents weren't necessarily recognizing that, uh, teachers never really said anything about it. So, uh, oh, yeah. so, so, so let's talk. Okay. So you were, you were diagnosed at seven. I was diagnosed. I don't remember how long ago, but I know I was young. It was so long ago. It was to the point where my memories were still yeah. at that point where they don't actually form completely. And I know I've been on it since at least third grade. However, it's always been an on-off process. Okay. My family's medical insurance and money wasn't always the best. So right. I had situations or months at a time where I didn't have it. And such as now, after I graduated high school, my doctors thought that I wasn't – it went away. And I still at the time wasn't quite sure what ADD and ADHD was. And so I just went along with it and – my doctor, she was great. She originally diagnosed me, but I'm assuming it's because I didn't understand the whole situation. And now I'd say about a year ago when we were, when I moved, um, we were cleaning out my stuff and I found some of my old ADHD, ADHD pills, Concerta, that my doctor gave me one last time just in case she was wrong. Right. And so I was like, well, you know, I can't concentrate. I might still be ADD. Let's try it. Why not? <laughs> yeah. And the whole, it was, it actually made me, the same as you, it's, it realized that I, everything was wrong and I couldn't actually really, it, it, everything was more clear. Everyone knows how this sounds, but I, my phrasing, and I'm not a medication, so it's hard <laughs> to phrase it, but you get what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Everything was much better. It's how it should be. And that was my kind of eye-opening experience. And that was a year ago. And it's been an uphill battle trying to get it on and off. It's days I have it, it feels great. And I can work in my scripts that I'm writing. I can do voice acting. I can actually make sure the apartment's clean. Oh my God. Right. And it's, it's really, um, I lost my train of thought. 
<laughs> Give me some context. Right around third grade is when potentially you're officially diagnosed, maybe. But yes, how, how old are you now? I am 21 at this point. 21. Okay. And it was I was diagnosed when I was probably between six and seven. Okay. I remember. So I only remember third grade because. At some point, we had to take a standardized reading test to, to learn our, for the people to learn our reading level. Yeah. I didn't quite understand it. However, I took it and they said that I had the reading level of like, I think a junior in high school and I was in like third grade. Wow. And they, I, they had me take it the next year as well. And they were confused because it went down to from like junior in high school to like the third grade. <laughs> yeah. And they didn't understand what was going on. And so they put me in a class with the all the kids with sort of disabilities, mental problems, physical problems, because I had I, I couldn't actually figure out what was going on at all. And so they just figured it was something along those lines that they didn't learn. And that was my kind of starting point that the earliest that I can remember. So it, was it like a, a like a reading comprehension thing or just the just the uh, ability to like speak words at, at a larger level it was I, i'm pretty sure it was just reading comprehension i vaguely remember how fast i could read being a part of it so i think it's reading comprehension okay but it's so bits and pieces I, I can hardly remember it's the earliest i can remember though and like moving forward uh you know do you do you see any issues with with your reading comprehension you know uh, off the medication versus on, on the medication? Oh, yeah, actually. I remember, I think it was sixth grade. I forget. It was my reading teacher back when we still had reading classes separately. We had to read a book once a week. And I remember at that time, my family was having some money problems. And since I didn't feel like my medicine was doing much, since I was so young, I didn't understand. Mm -hmm. I was taken off it for a little while. And suddenly I went from being able to read like no problem to I can't sit here and even read a page because it's it's painful. Oh, look, a bird. Oh, a squirrel. What was I doing? <laughs> yeah, that was really every session of me trying to actually read. And yeah. it got to the point where my mother was like, I'll she just signed my paper saying I read it when I didn't because she felt bad for me. And that's, I think, the earliest I can remember for that. There's sure. been a couple different situations. I know recently when I'm off it, I know. I can try as hard as I can, but I can read like two paragraphs. If it's on like Reddit, I can read maybe a couple um, posts and that's it. But after that, it, it trails off and it's impossible. Yeah. I, I know I definitely have, um, a, a similar issue. Just, just, just the idea of like reading a book is like so <laughs> not not even like anything I'm I'm remotely interested in. Uh I think I can I can name three books that I actually enjoyed. Uh the <laughs> the first Jurassic Park, uh like the original Jurassic Park yeah. book. Um but I was also like huge huge Jurassic Park fan. Um uh, Dr. Doolittle just because I, I was so intrigued with the idea of, of talking with animals. Um, and then later on, like, I want to say this was, this was probably when I was, uh, in my twenties. Um, I, I, I had to take a few long road trips for, for work. And during those road trips, um, I was, I, I had promised myself that I was going to read, um, all of the Lord of the Rings books. Oh God. Uh, so I remember reading, I remember finishing a book, like the first book, like I finished and I remembered pretty much everything. But after that, <laughs> I know I read the books. I just have no idea what they, what, what they were even about. Like walking. The fact that, <laughs> the fact that you got through it yeah. without medication is impressive because I remember I, I could start it. I could vaguely remember parts of it, but it was I, I I couldn't even concentrate enough to read, let alone finish it. Yeah. Like I know I have tons of books behind me in my bookshelf. And I've tried to read most of them, but finishing them, there's like three over here. Yeah. And it was because I had to for class. Sure. So uh, impressive on its own right. I'll I'll give you that. 
<laughs> yeah, I my my biggest issue with with most of the books that I check out, or even like uh, you know magazines, like anything that has like photography or illustration in it. Oh yes, that's the that's the worst for me because. I just concentrate on the pictures. It's like, let's just flip through and look at all the pictures. And, and that's all. That's all I do. So I might read like the first paragraph of a news story, but the rest of the time, I'm just, you know, especially online, like I'm looking around to see what else is on the page or, you know, when it comes to Reddit, um, and it's this big wall of text, like I might read the first paragraph and then I'll scroll down to see if they were kind enough to put that TLDR. But uh, otherwise, yeah, I just I just can't do it. Uh, so now I haven't really tried to read anything after you know uh, being on being on the medication. I'd be interested to see uh, how how things would go. But because I have such like a negative um, connotation with reading books and reading magazines and stuff that like I I don't even like want to try. <laughs> I I would highly recommend it because it is. It is amazing to be able to actually read, let alone for me, when I'm not on medication, I have a hard time speaking in general. My phrasing gets off. I forget what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm like the most socially awkward person you can ever imagine because I, I don't know what I'm doing or saying. And I know for me, the difference on and off is so crazy that it's, I want to, but I understand that there's this like, ah, this is so bad. It's painful. Uh, I feel yeah. It's yeah. You know, that's actually uh, that's actually a pretty interesting thought. Just uh, just the uh, just the idea, like you know, when when I look at myself, um, I do have a hard time putting into words what I want to say. So I'm I'm a slow speaker because like I want to make sure I say it the way I want it to be said. Um, so that really affected me like growing up because. I would start to talk to like a friend, like, or a group of friends. And then I would not necessarily trail off, but I would, I would pause and it would be like a dramatic pause, like five to 10 <laughs> seconds. And then I would finish the, you know, the thought. Uh, but, but even right now, like, you know, uh, I, I'm, I'm also diabetic and just learning the terminology. Like I still, I, I've been diabetic for 10 years now. Ooh. And I still don't know, I, I still don't know most of the terminology. So like calling up my, uh, my, my pharmacist or the, the medical supply company to reorder things, like I'm better at describing what it is <laughs> than the actual term <laughs> that uh, is used. I know, like, for me, I, like, I, since I have a hard time, I for completely forgot what I was saying. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think. I know for me, it's remembering what medication I'm on when I'm, let's say I go to your doctor, they ask what medication I'm on. I have it on my phone in case they ask because there's, there's no way I'd remember. And if you have problems with that, that, that might be the way to go. Just kind of figure it out and then write it down at some point. Yeah. Because notes are a godsend for us, for eight, eight people with ADD and ADHD. Because that's that's what saves. I know that's what saves me, and I found that that's what saves a lot of people. I, try it; it might help if you have problems there. I don't. I don't that's know. that's definitely a good uh, a good a good note. Um, you know, th there are some medication that kind of just gotten ingrained in me. So you know, like insulin. You know, I, I yeah. know I know I got that, um, but like the the antidepressant i'm on has like this wacky 15 letter oh, name that you can't even like even try to pronounce uh starts with a v <laughs> and oh, that's about as far as i go <laughs> at that point i you know i'd attempt to fail to mispronounce it but you know, trying is better than not trying unless it's so far off the pharmacist doesn't understand yeah so it I guess it's worth a shot. <laughs> uh, um, so, what other things do you notice? Like, do you do you fidget a lot? Um, when I was little, I had a hard time sitting still. I I moved my hands around constantly, but today it's more so rather than me moving around constantly. I I speak with my hands. 
Yeah. And even now, I don't have a webcam, but I'm speaking with my hands, even though I'm not on, I, I don't need to. It's, it's more so a way of alleviating the constant need to do something. Yeah. And so if I'm in like, a, when I was in public speaking class in college, everyone always mentioned that my hands were like really distracting because they move at pure random. And that's, as far as I'm aware, the only thing that I do, I don't fidget. I'm actually relatively still, which is shocking because yeah. I know most people aren't. Yeah, I, I've I've become more aware of how like energetic and sporadic I am as far as like my movement goes. So, um, I I have a standing desk at at work, and I usually stand when I when I'm podcasting, but I'm not right now. But um, I listen to headphones for most of the day, so like I'll. I'll kind of bop to, to the beat. But even when I don't have like music running in my headphones, I, I'm still like actively moving. Um, when I, if, if I go into a meeting and it's longer than like a half an hour or it has like nothing to do with me whatsoever, but I'm like stuck there. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll fidget. Like I'll move my legs around. I'll try to get into a better position, something that's a little bit more comfortable or, you know, or I'll just stand up, you know? <laughs> yeah. That's, I know like a lot of people, it, whatever helps, I suppose, because everyone has their own way of getting out that excess energy. I yeah. know for me, it's my hands and you might hear some stuff opening and closing. That's just me occupying my hands I know for some other people, they just move their legs. Some people have like what would almost be restless foot syndrome. Uh, it's everyone has their own weird way of doing it. And sure. I can actually, I can't actually see any correlation between any. It's just more so a personal preference, which is actually interesting. Yeah. It, and it just, you know, again, like I'm, I'm, I'm very new to this idea um, and still trying to like figure everything out. But now that like, I'm aware that this is, something that I'm dealing with. I, I am just more self-observant of like what, what I'm doing most of the time. But yeah, I always have like something in my hand that I'm playing with. Um, I'm very bad with my cell phone. Like I, if, if I've got nothing else to occupy my hands with, I'll have the cell phone, um, you know, just, I might just be locking it and unlocking it or, you know, looking at the notifications, even though there's no notifications there, just just so I have something else to to do. Okay, I I recommend for you since you're so new, this whole podcast, what you have going on, will do wonders for you because everyone deals with it in their own way, and everyone has their own piece of advice to give upon to someone else. Like for me, I always say take notes because if you're as forgetful as I am. Notes are awesome. Right. Because even from a young age, I always had little pieces of paper with like little important things on them. When I was a kid, it was cheat codes and for games. And as an adult, it's like notes of stuff to do, what to talk about, um, notes for my series, anything. Notes yeah. are awesome. Yeah, I've I've started to carry um like a little pocket notebook with me. So it's like a little fifty page thing. Um I, I've been using it as like a you know, if I have an idea for a podcast or if I have something that I want to remember to do or I'm on a, on a phone call and I want to make sure I get everything down, I'll, I'll put it in there. Um, I'm also like tracking like my moods of the day. So I'll have like two or three bullet points of different things that took place that, hmm. you know, affected me in, in a certain way. All right. Interesting. Um, and then. I have a, a moleskin, which is a, a little bigger that, um, I put like long form notes in. So I, I do some like writing in it as far as like, you know, I, I, I dip into poetry every once in a while or, you know, I, I try to take the little bullet points of that little mood journal, um, and condense them into like a summary that then I can go to the doctor talk to the doctor about or talk to my therapist about just to just to make sure I say everything that that needs to be said. So yeah, I've I've been trying to do that a lot a lot more often lately. It will help you a lot because I know for me, I always at work, I I'm I work retail, I'm a cashier, sadly. And um when it's slow, I'll just take notes of what's on my head because usually it's something important like 
Last week it was talk. Um, um, what's the word? Points to talk about on on this. Right. And a couple of them were like notes for my web series. I also d- uh, I also played D- Dungeons and Dragons with my friends, and I'm a DM. Right. And I was taking notes on ideas for that. And I, I have so many notes lying around my room. It's it's a bad habit, but it's it's a great habit because you will never remember. Because I know for me, I'm always when someone's thinking, I have two options: listen or think about what I'm going to respond with. And yeah, that's, it, 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 it's kind of along that line, I suppose. Um, along those same lines, like how how are you in an alone setting? Like if you're if you're driving. For like long, longer than like twenty minutes, what do you what do you normally occupy yourself with? For me, when I'm driving, if there's no one in the car, I have to have music. As soon as I get in the car, if I'm alone, I have to put on music because otherwise, I will slowly drive myself insane because I, I I can't sit still. And sitting still in a car driving, let alone driving silently, is just as bad as someone like attempting to cut off their own arm. For me, it's so painful. I, I listen to music. I'll tap my fingers if it's a, if it's a song I'll enjoy. I'll have my my left hand, which is I, I've slightly damaged it. I'll have I'll be kind of moving my hands along to the beat or something. Anything to kind of keep my free hand occupied. Sure. Uh, so, do, you, do you do you find yourself at all um, like having having conversations with yourself? Ah. Uh, when I was younger, I did. As an adult, I'll think out loud. But I think that's more so me. I've gotten numb to how I always used to talk to myself. I think I do, but I've done it so much. I don't. I don't know if I do actually. Okay. Because doing it for like over ten years, you numb yourself to something. <laughs> yeah. I, no one's I, ever mentioned it. So. Yeah, I know that. Um, like, if I'm in in the car alone, I will have. Not necessarily conversations with myself, but I will almost practice for conversations that may or may not happen. <laughs> so, like, I, I had this, uh, I, I have like a, a friend at work that we were going through some, um, misunderstandings of, uh, like intentions and whatnot. Uh, she's, she's, she's female and so, uh, it kind of added stress to the, to the relationship. And we do a lot of collaborating together at, at work. So, um, when it was at tense, I would, I would find myself like having conversations like, well, if she, you know, is showing uncomfortability or if she's like drawing herself away from me, like I would approach it this way. And then I would have that conversation. Um, but yeah, I I seem to do that uh, a lot, especially a lot more over the last last couple of months. Uh, I've noticed. I know for me, I I always try and plan out conversations ahead. Being both always, I'm an introvert, so conversations terrify me as is. Yeah, right. Being an introvert with ADD and or ADHD, whatever it is, I don't remember anymore. <laughs> it, it, it's so difficult, and I I find myself always pre planning like. For example, I had my at the front end that I work as, as a cashier. They're hiring for new management for the front end, and I'm one of the people they're considering. And I've been always thinking about well, how I'm going to respond to certain topics for like the past week. Yeah, and, and I know I will never remember them, but it's just making me feel more comfortable. Yeah, or if I'm on a date, I'll like because I'm so bad at conversations. I I, I shoot myself in the foot the first ten seconds, <laughs> and I'm always trying to think of how to remedy that. But as as I said, I'll forget it, and I never remember. And I know uh, I'm just definitely the same way. So uh, shoot yourself in the foot. As it like, uh, are you? Is it like your your style of humor that might catch them off guard, or like ex- explain that, that that sort of experience? I mean, I have a I for me for my sense of humor, I don't I can find a lot of stuff humorous, and so I what I find humorous probably offends a lot of people. But for me, it's mostly I'm socially awkward when I'm not on medication. So for me, conversating is a very difficult thing. Even yeah. this, you can probably tell after you when you're editing it, it is very difficult for me. And so it's it's always I come off as either uptight, scared, or rude. And I don't mean to. It's just I, I'm trying to figure out what to say. And it's it's like a train that's constantly crashing. 
And it's the driver's con- trying to constantly make it not crash. Yeah. That's the best analogy I can come up with. So uh, you think potentially like that your, your ADHD, uh, is like standing in your, in your way of, of having relationships like that, like dates or, um, it, Anything like that? It, I know it makes it more difficult. I wouldn't say impossible or standing in the way, but it makes it much more difficult. It's like trying to climb Mount Everest without a, without supplies, I'd say. It's not impossible, but it's really dangerous and hard and difficult. Because I know I, I've had a couple, It's but they've always ended because, not because my me as my mistakes as ADD, but because of general normal problems and failures. Yeah. Rather than my ADD shooting me in the foot. That's it's different after it starts off and it more so takes someone who understands or someone who grew up with someone who's ADD because people who have grown up around people with ADD or are ADD really understand other people with it. Like it's easy to pinpoint if someone has it, if you're ADD, ADHD, or whichever when one you are, it's, it's kind of like a Sony homing radar and it's, it helps people kind of click a little bit easier. I found. Sure. Uh, you your your D and D group is it in person or is it online? It's in person. Um, long story short, because I would have never joined it. <laughs> but my best friend, who I've known since I was like four, um, after high school, he I, um he was throwing a Christmas party, and so I just said, yeah, sure. Me and my last ex broke up. I need to get out and live a little bit instead of sulking in my room being being sad. <laughs> and so I went along and we played. I forget what it was. But then we transitioned to D and D, and and then I joined one of his other groups, and I'm DMing for them. And it's it, it's it's really it's very difficult for ADD people and ADHD people, any of the different branches, because for me, I've got to pre-plan every last inch of everything, or just purely wing it. There's no in between. Sure. And for those that are familiar, that's either really good or really bad, depending on what you're trying to plan. Because just like conversations, it feels incomplete. But you trying the best that you can, it's just you can't help it. Yeah. It's it's all on those lines. Uh, role play, because I, I also do D&D, uh, but it's... I, I'm I'm very very much a noob. I'm still on my first like campaign, but it's all online, so... Um, it is dragged out a, a long time. Uh, but you know, fr- from, from my standpoint, I, you know, I'm just, uh, I'm just a character. So trying to, you know, not speak for myself, but to speak for this character was really difficult. And also, you know, just because like, I, you know, I've, I've no idea <laughs> like who this character is or like what his motivations are. Um, just because I, I, I still wasn't even sure like what my motivations were to even, uh, partake in the game outside of like, you know, just getting used to talking with people and being outside of my, of my comfort zone. But, um, you know, the idea of DMing scares me just because of the amount of time that, that it takes. So, uh, outside, like just, just in, from your perspective, Either DMing or being, uh, you know, a character, you you prefer the DM side. I would rather be a character. However, I was, it was between me, my friend who originally who originally joined because of, or one of our other friends who stopped DMing for that group because he was getting burned out. Yeah, and so me and my friend, he wasn't good at it, and they kind of picked me because I have the most experience. I've I, I have on and off experience, and I it was the most of everyone there. It, 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 it's like, for in our perspective, people with ADHD, it's like trying to play like ten different characters at once while well, trying <laughs> to see the big picture. Yeah, the thing with characters is that at first, when you're new, I know for me, it was a very difficult and slow moving. A lot of people moved a lot faster than me and figured it out, but after I figured it out, it was kind of like. I just zoomed past them. Like, whoa, this finally clicks. Let's go. It's, it's very, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, it's just sudden. It just, 
works and you get into it you figure it out and it just clicks to you and it becomes really natural after a while sure. and i notice my friends who don't have ad adhd it's it's they they catch on a little bit slower more so slow than i am but i i click instantly and everything it, it just feels right it feels like i'm actually doing this in another as another person right whereas they're they had trouble at first figuring it out. And granted, I had a little bit, when I was learning, it was, I was, it was different for me than it, it looks like it is for them. So I wouldn't take that as just more experience. Uh, I, there might be a connection, but I'm, I'm not a doctor. I'm just a guy <laughs> with a microphone. So, uh, since you do like the, the voice acting and, and the writing, um, that that plays into the D&D, so you do, like, all the character voices as well? Oh, I love doing the voices when I can figure one out. It's, <laughs> I always... I, I do a really specific, like, general area. I do kind of more wacky voices or elderly voices. And so if there's, like, an old character or kind of a really crazy character, the voice is on par. Everyone loves it. But if it's a normal person, uh, I'll just talk like I normally do, because otherwise it'll drift into this weird, like... Let's say I'm trying to do Scottish. It'll somehow drift into Indian or Jamaican, <laughs> and I'm not sure how. Right. It's really weird. I don't understand that, actually. Uh, what, one thing I've noticed is that, as far as, far as me goes, like I, if, if I'm uncomfortable with the situation, it, it's obviously worse for me. But if I have like a passion for it, I can definitely like dedicate the time. I can definitely dedicate the energy, and you know, I, I, have, I have fun with it. Um, so, you know, just, just hearing you say, you know, that you, that you get into the characters and, and, and you're, you're, you're able to fly by, like, I can totally see that in myself, like starting to get into the groove of what D and D is and what, what I'm supposed to be doing as, as a character handler, um, to maneuver them through, you know, whatever the obstacle is. So the, the, the big thing for people with ADD, ADHD is routine. Routine helps us figure out what we're doing. Because I have routine every morning. And if I didn't follow that, I'd be like a lost sheep. Same with D&D. Because after you figure it out, you figure out the base stuff, and routine clicks. There's no getting past the routine. And if you have to change it, it's, it's difficult. Like, if it becomes this sudden fork in a row that splits left and right, you're still going straight. Because you're like, what? Where did it go? What happened? It's... That, and it's, and that's why it kind of, I guess, clicks. I lost my train of thought again. <laughs> no medication, folks. Yeah. Uh, what, what's your calendar like? Like, are you, are you, uh, like, do you prefer having like a, a strict schedule or at least, you know, knowing the day before what you're going to be doing in the next day or? I would rather know what I'm going to be doing beforehand rather than suddenly, hey, let's, let's go just do this. Just right off the, the suddenly, I, I I like planning. Yeah, I, I like to be free, but if I'm doing something, I I need it planned. If it's not planned, then I'm gonna be nervous. I'm gonna be freaking out. It's it's good. I'm gonna be sh- kind of shaking because I'm like, oh god, oh my, I I gotta I gotta do this this and this on time, and like a really tight schedule is really horrible for me. But having a just general routine is so awesome because otherwise I forget who I was in the morning sometimes. <laughs> I swear. Yeah, I I do find myself uh you know like I I I need things on on the calendar at least the day before so like I can mentally prepare myself or I I can at least feel confident going into whatever that situation is even if it's just going out to dinner um a, a lot of my coworkers are still like in their in their early 20s or mi- you know mid to late 20s but they they're more apt to like you know at two o'clock in the afternoon say, Hey, you know, let's get, let's get together after work and, you know, have a beer or let's, let's do a game night or something. And that puts me into like this weird spot where, you know, even if my schedule is like wide open and I could totally fit that in, I, I just, I'm just so anti like last minute planning. Like I need, I need some kind of structure uh, to, I don't know, just to feel comfortable. So, yeah, so like I, I, I normally, if something is, is planned last minute, 
depending on who who it's with, um, I'll generally say no, <laughs> just yeah. just so I don't have to face like what 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 unknowns are are about to come. I know for me, unless it's a really close friend or if I'm dating someone, someone I'm dating, I'll say no right away because it's I like having a schedule that's pre-planned. Let me paint a picture. Friday through Sunday, I work. Sometime and Monday, I'm with my father, and afterwards, I play D and D. Tuesdays are my free days. Wednesdays, past four o'clock, I'm playing D and D. Thursdays, I'll occasionally work. Anything in any other free time at that during the week, it it has to be at least three days in advance. If it's not <laughs> three days, I'll say no, and it's it, 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 there are no exceptions unless it's of course someone I'm really close with. Yeah, it's. Just that. Yeah. Uh, w- one thing I, I also struggle with as far as like the, the work related stuff or even friends related stuff is, um, I, I don't know how, how it is with you, but like potlucks are, are still a big thing here in Cleveland. So we'll decide like a month before that on this date, we're going to be doing a potluck, but no theme is set. And, and people aren't thinking about it or setting a theme or making decisions until like the day before. But it's like, for me, that is absurd. <laughs> like, how, how can you not like plan ahead of like what you're going to make and, you know, how much of it you're going to make? And ah, man, that, that, that is a constant struggle for me. I know for me, a good example is my friend, my roommate, her and her fiance threw a medieval themed dinner a couple a couple of weeks ago. I don't remember how long. However, they brought it on the day before. <laughs> yeah. Now, since these people are my close group of friends, I say yes. However, I'm terrified because I don't. I haven't pre-planned a big picture, even though I won't remember what I pre-planned. And it, it really freaked me out, and I was on edge for probably about a fourth of the time. But afterwards, I relaxed. But that's only because I was comfortable in the situation. Yeah. It's all the situations are like that. If someone's like, Hey, let's grab some drinks after work. Uh, I'll, 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 I'd say no, but if I were to say yes, I'd be freaking out for like three fourths of the time. And then <laughs> afterwards I'd, I'd be kind of lower down and mellow. It's, yeah. Yeah. The other thing that I really struggle with is like friends that are out of town ugh. just pop in <laughs> like, Hey, you know, just driving through, uh, you know, we, we haven't talked, you know, we haven't seen each other in a few months or whatever. Um, and that, that bugs the, the crap out of me. We, we have, uh, we have cousins that, that live like a few states away and they'll just surprise come into town for a day or two and they won't tell you until like they're there. <laughs> it's like, ah, it just, it's just, uh, yeah, it, it hurts, hurts my head to think like, man, like I was mentally prepared not to do anything tonight or, you know, I wanted to, you know, watch Netflix or, or whatever. And, you know, the, the idea of dropping everything and going out. Yeah. I'm, I'm with you. Like it, it's not necessarily fear for me. Uh, but it's just, it's just uncomfortable. Yeah. I know since I've moved out in the past while, my friends, most of them, they're still in college and they're trying to stay with their parents to alleviate the, debt they'll accumulate yeah and so naturally to hang out they'll all come here and i'm okay with it and and they'll like come here and they'll like accumulate normally before i graduated i'd be terrified because people lots of people it's sudden but after a while i've gotten used to it and i kind of like it but i don't and it's 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 in the same area whereas I, I feel like I should because I'm really close to them, but at the same time, sometimes it makes me really uncomfortable. Sure. All right, so let's go ahead and close up the episode here. Again, for the extended version, you can join us over in the Squared Circle of Trust and pledge a few dollars our way to help support what we're doing here. Uh, you can do that by going to wrestlingwithfeelings.com and clicking the big green button. That'll take you to our Patreon page. And if you subscribe for three dollars a month or more, you'll get the full conversation. Uh, some some final things before we go, uh, just some things that uh, that I know I want to work 
on, and that is better note taking. So uh, again, I've been carrying a little pocket notebook with me. Um, I want to do a better job at when I'm thinking about something to not wait until I get back to, you know, uh, the office or back home or whatever to just pull it out, take, take a, take a pause, uh, from whatever I'm doing and, and write it down. Um, and I'm also taking long form notes as well. So, um, yeah, I, I definitely want to do a, a better job there. Um, I also want to change my morning process. Uh, I, I, I need, I need to wake up on time. That, uh, that is a definite, definite must for me moving forward. So, um, uh, posted a, uh, you know, just looking for a- advice. So just posted a, a topic on the, um, I think it was the, the, the depression subreddit, just cause I think it has more to do with that side of things. Um, and some, some tips that, that were thrown out was just, you know, putting my phone on the other side of the room. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to try that out. Um, and no more five minute snoozes. I need to be more, uh, responsible and more, um, more into acknowledging how I'm feeling at that moment. So yeah, no more five plus snoozes, you know, four, four is okay. <laughs> you know, cause my snoozes are only set for about, uh, three to three to five minutes. So, um, I think that's okay, but, but definitely no more five more or five plus. Uh, and then also, you know, just keep trying to reach out and make and retain friends, uh, and, and make sure to stop avoiding events. I know I've, I've been avoiding meeting up with, uh, one of the people that I met on, on Tinder, not necessarily because I had an issue with her, but you know, I was looking at how I was feeling that night and I didn't want to go out or, you know, whatever. So I, I need to, I, I need to, I don't know. I, I almost feel like I need to force myself to try it and go out and, and, uh, experience whatever it is I'm about to experience. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty much it. This series, as well as the rest of the podcast released through fanstalkpodcast.com are supported exclusively by our Patreon subscribers. You can subscribe today for as little as a dollar a month, receive early access to our content, and the more you contribute, the more you can receive. So definitely check that out. Uh, Again, $3 a month or more, you'll get the extended version of this conversation as well as future uh, interviews that we do here on Wrestling With Feelings. Again, my name is Garvin, and I appreciate the opportunity you've given me to talk about what I'm experiencing here as I'm wrestling with feelings. Wrestling with Feelings is part of the Fans Talk Podcast family and can be found at WrestlingWithFeelings.com. The Fans Talk Podcast family is a subsidiary of Tigar Creative, LLC. I wish I could explain more, but I, have, I don't have any medication available right now. Uh, you work retail. Do, do you like your job? Uh, I I kind of like it, but I wish I could do more. Like, I was originally hired to work seasonal. I worked in the plant section. I made sure the plants were watered. I moved the grills. Mm-hmm. I did all the outside stuff. They liked me so much, they brought me on full time. However, they moved me as a cashier because we also had to be trained to work a register out there. And they always called me up to the front end to help them because they had trouble keeping cashiers. Right. And so the management learned me up there and they were like, let's get this guy. I want him right now. And so, like, I've become one of the favorites really quickly. And while I enjoy it, it's easy. At the same time, I hate it because I'm not doing much. Yeah. I'm standing there only moving my hands. My legs don't move. I, I actually have to concentrate on trying to be really friendly to customers. I like, I, I, I appreciate all people, but being an introvert who's ADD, right. it's terrifying and very difficult. And so while I like it, I hate it. Yeah. It's, so. So, so you want to do more as in like work in other departments or just, just not be standing there, you know, waiting for the next person to come up. I would just, I just want to do something better yeah. and different. And that's why I've kind of been, as soon as I learned there's an open position for management and they were thinking about me, I, I've been pestering my manager for that for as much as I can. And I don't like to pester anyone about anything, but I've, 
done what I would consider pestering. And it's it's something I would rather do because rather than standing, I'm moving around. And it's more so learning something different because I've learned everything I can about this specific position. Just like when I was in seasonal in the lawn and garden section, I learned everything I needed to about that section. Right. And after I learn everything, I get bored of it and it it starts to drain me. Sure. So it's more so moving on and doing different.